So now that I'm in ZBrush, let me import this hexagonal structure. It should just overwrite this one in here. And so if I can very quickly, and so there's, I can also in here retopologize surfaces. And so for instance, if I click on this button, that button, we can see all the mesh edges and they're not very nice. It's very crude, they're not connecting, they're overlapping, it's, it's a horrible looking structure. But with one button click, and I don't know the resolution, so it might explode. But if I change that resolution up to a bigger number, it should basically refine this topology and make it into a really nice homogeneous structure, as you can see, depending on if I guessed that resolution correctly. And so sometimes it'll, uh, if I do a really low resolution, it'll just kind of smooth everything out because there's not a high enough poly count. And if I bring the resolution up really high, like for instance, that did a better job at it. And the, the, the topology of this object is a lot cleaner now. It's still not super fantastic, but it is much better. And so, but and also it merged my pipes together. I no longer have like a, uh, a seam. The fact that my, the, what is it called? Sorry, new laptop. The fact that the, the mesh count or the, uh, the, hexo the hexagon size isn't the same doesn't really matter anymore. It just smashed them together and then kind of merged them in this, for this particular case. If it matters, I would spend some time in the beginning to figure out how to line those, those, the, the hexagon count up. And so there's also a, uh, if I turn off this, it's still kind of crude, it's still unrefined, like there's nasty edges, these, these uh, polygons aren't great. And so if I go in here and click deform and smooth, or in this case relax, now I've got a really nice soft structure that's less likely to fracture and less likely to break because there are no longer any sharp apexes or hard points that would basically initiate a crack. And so I cannot stress the usefulness of fillets in 3D printing. That's the, the more things you can fill it, the better, because that's a, basically decreasing the possible chances for it to break or decreasing the possible failure points. And so this is very quickly done, and I apologize, there's a random structure on the inside there. But, so that was really quick. Let's bring in the internal structure. Internal structure, oh wait, gotta make a new layer. Bring in the internal structure. And so now we've got basically a nice, very quickly done internal structure. And so I'm going to merge the two of them and then retopologize the whole object once more just to really get it because there's still not, for instance, inside all of these circles, inside all of the little the, the cellular shapes we've just made, there's now what we've created a new hard edge, the gap between the internal structure and the reinforcement structure, the reinforcing hexagonal structure on it. And so once it retopologizes this shape, it'll basically smooth everything out. And then as I go back in here and then click deform once more, we've now got a really nice, what would be very difficult to model with a traditional CAD program object. And so that was, there was a little too much over here. It kind of smoothed that area out, but maybe I want that. In this case, probably not, but for the sake of this uh, workshop and not spending forever going over those details, I'm just gonna kind of gloss over that. And so this is now a pretty heavy file. Like that's, it's got a poly count of, let's see, I guess I can't see it with this new sort of format here. But I'm basically, in order to do, in order to basically make it usable in real life again, I have to reduce the poly count now. And ZBrush has a fantastic decimation software. And so I know like Magix and some other softwares can reduce the, the poly counts of different meshes. And they do an all right job at it, but sometimes when you really want to reduce it, they'll deform the surface or create unusable results. So ZBrush does a really nice job of just basically decimating things without changing the topology too, too much. And so Z script, no, Z plugin, decimate. Now it's a much lower poly count while still maintaining that same hexagonal structure and it didn't blow anything up. Actually, it did blow something up. That was weird. I forgot to weld points at the beginning, and that's what I did. But, import internal structure. Sorry about that, gotta reload something in real quick. 
But so this is a lot of the workflows I'll do. And so this is, for instance, just the 3D printed portion of the object. So this duct would then mate with a standard CNC wall section inside a, uh, not even a wall section, let's say it's a, uh, a Formula One duct. And this is now mating with the, like a standard air intake you bought from, Formula wouldn't buy an air intake from AutoZone, but like, say we bought something from AutoZone, a traditionally manufactured part with standard CAD edges that are very, very sharp and very nice. This is just the portion of the part that's 3D printed and doesn't actually interact with another portion of it, or another part that's outside of this. And so it doesn't really matter the, the, the like, accuracy down to the like micron level at this point because I'm not since it's all 3d printed it doesn't it's not any harder to machine it's not any harder to uh, design and it's actually a little bit of extra time in the designing up front can save you a lot of time later and so wrong one import internal structure forgot one step weld points So, now if I merge everything together, merge down, okay. And so this will stick everything together again, we'll smooth it out, and then I'll bring it back into Rhino and basically finish it off by capping off all, all the ends of this, uh, this duct with a mating surface that would go to a traditionally manufactured part without basically, and so I'll have the accuracy of CAD with the sort of mesh manipulation ability of ZBrush or whatever this is the particular software. There's a, a lot of them with fantastic free YouTube tutorials just online, which, is, which are great. And so now we've got this nice smoothed part. Let me summate it so I can work on it in Rhino again. And so I know like, for instance, SolidWorks, does not like meshes a whole lot, but as we move forwards, yeah, like see your, <laughs> like it, uh, it's, they, they don't really agree, but as we move forwards and as softwares are basically developing more and more, they're gonna start to leverage both sides and the, like there's no point in trying to refine something that a mesh modeler has already done and did 10 years ago and can do way better than a CAD program can do right now and vice versa. There's totally like a, a NURBS curve is, is a fantastic modeling tool. So if I export these guys back out, export, we're going to call it duct to rhino. Uh, 